What's good everyone? So today I'm gonna to show you how to build your own applications utilizing the ChatGPT API. This is going to be very beginner friendly, super simple to help you get started. And then from here, you can go ahead and create whatever application you want to. So first thing is, how do you even figure out where the API is? And well, if you search it, it can be a little confusing, but all you need to do is go to platform.openai.com. Then you need to log in with an account. If you don't have one, make one. And then from there, you can go to documentation and they do have a quick start tutorial, which is fairly simple and easy, but what I'm gonna show you is actually even easier to follow along and start from scratch. However, they do utilize their own built-in functions for the API, which essentially saves you some code, but if you're just starting out, it can be quite confusing to understand. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to essentially start off from scratch, and then you can build out your own apps that way. However, if you do wanna follow on the docs, you could go here have node installed if you don't go ahead and do it there and then you can clone this or simply download this file from the github and this is essentially their starter application but i'm gonna do an even easier method and i'm gonna make this from scratch so let me let me just bring this over real quick and i have uh, vs code as my code editor so let me go right here and let's just go ahead and let me yeah let me bring this one over so we can have like a half screen that way we can see the actual uh, docs at the same time. And we will need this again to get our API key. So I was testing out earlier with a bunch of them, but uh, pretty much here I have an empty VS code window. So what I'm gonna do is type command J to open up my terminal, control J windows. And right now I have zero folders, files, whatever created. So if you wanna create your own, go ahead and do that. But I'm just gonna go ahead and say CD into desktop first, cause I wanna save this on my desktop. Then I can say MKDIR, and let's just call this the ChatGPT API app dash one. So I'm just making a folder now called this. Then I can CD, which navigates into this folder I just called ChatGPT dash API dash app dash one. Whatever you named your file, you would CD into that. Press enter, and let me just do code dot to open this up. If you don't have this set up, you can just uh, basically you can just open it up on your actual computer too. But let me just bring this over and now let me yeah let me get off rid of this this previous window I don't need this now we can have some fun so first thing is this is going to be a very basic template if you want to see a more detailed application definitely comment below and i'll create one after this but for now i just want to make something very base template that way if you were to make your own thing you could do sort of whatever you want because a lot of other apps they have like specifics and it's kind of hard to understand. So first off, let's go here and let's just make index.js. And again, if you do not have Node installed, just go go download Node by just Google searching or you can again go through the API, install Node right here too. And this is gonna be our basic uh, file we're gonna do a bunch of coding in. So first thing is we have to install some packages. So let's go to terminal, command J again, and we need to install uh, OpenAI and I want to utilize Axios, you could use Fetch too, or you could use straight up their uh, API functions as well. And then we're gonna need to install a ENV as well. So first of all, let's just do npm install, and I'm gonna say Axios, and I'm gonna say OpenAI. And then I'm gonna say dot ENV. So let me drag this over a little bit so you can see what exactly what I typed. And I think from now, this is all I'm gonna use for this setup. If we need more, we'll install it later, no big deal, but here, this will create a package JSON file. We got axios.env and we got openAI. So now, what we need to do is write out our code. So, if you want to actually follow along with the docs, we do need a secret key, which is right here. So, in order for us to access that, the way I'm doing it is creating a .env file. So, if you've done API before, you pretty much know this. But basically, they even have notes here. You, you, you essentially don't want people to see this. So the way you can do this is you click new file here, dot env, enter. And then for the name, this is whatever you want to name. I'm just gonna call this OpenAI, capitalized by the way, underscore API, underscore key, press equal. And then what you need to do is go to create new secret key. If you don't have this, you can also click here and go to the, your uh, API keys, but I'm just go here and create it. And I already have the memory keys, no. So let me delete, let me delete some of these. So I'll delete this one, delete this one. And also, yeah, if you have too many, you don't need them, you can just delete them. So I'll just click create new key. And I'm gonna blur this out obviously, but again, just make sure no one sees this. 
for the total sake, I could just revoke this afterwards, so no big deal. But uh, again, paste this in. I'll paste that, hit save. I'll switch over now so you can't see what the key is, but basically I paste that in and now I have it in my .emb file. So now we need to call the API and then have some sort of code written for us to do this. So there's a couple ways. So right off the bat, they have their own code blocks and their templates. So if I were to drag this out over here, a lot of it is actually in Python too. So again, if you're using Python, perfect. But uh, I'll go here to API reference. And again, we already installed OpenAI, so you don't have to. If you're using Python, obviously you do pip. And then this is the setup here. And then they use curl, and obviously they have a different set of code. But here's like their built-in functions for the API. So that way it saves, the, uh, essentially saves you from running out the code. But again, if you've never coded before, you're still new, this is gonna be like super confusing. So I'm gonna do it from using Axios, essentially from scratch. And one cool way to do is you could actually just go here, copy this. And this is again, this is using Python, right? So you can go here and say, rewrite, I'm on ChatGPT by the way, rewrite this in Axios, paste this here. And this is one way to do this. Also, if you were ever to use um, Axios, again, it's fairly simple anyways to set this up and they separated everything too. So that way you can just call it in you can do it within inside as well. It doesn't matter. But again, this looks like it's working. So I copy this here and let's go back, open the eye. Again, you can write this from scratch and there's different ways I had this written too. But uh, just look at the code real quick and see how it looks. So first off, we have this URL. That's where we're gonna have everything. And if I were to go ahead and save this, it's not gonna work. So what we need to do first off is go to authorization we need to let's even do back ticks. Also, you could do um, quotes as well. But let's do back ticks, and then for your API key, let's close these on back ticks first, and then I'm gonna do dollar sign curly brace, and I'm just gonna call this. I'll delete this completely and just say API, and then key like this. You can name this literally whatever you want to, but keep it like that, and then we could say const, and this is the variable name API key, which we just put right here. And I'm gonna say equals to, and then you would do process.env dot open AI underscore API underscore key. And you're probably like, what is this part? Well, if you ever use uh, .env, you know this is what you have to put in front of it. And then again, on a .env file, this is what exactly what we named it. So make sure you save it and name it like this. So you were hit save, and then I go here and just type in node index.js. It's not gonna work. It's gonna cause an error and then go crazy. And you see a bunch of this code right here. And pretty much if we scroll enough, it should show the actual API key. It should be undefined. And let me see if I can find, where is this? Tenly, if I just go here and just do like console.log and be like, this is the API. And then I could say API key. Don't, don't worry about this. This is just for example, tutorial sake. If I were to just go like this and uh, let's just Erase this, let's just say hi, and then here, because I just wanna, I wanna save us view so we can see what's happening. So it's gonna say API undefined. So right now it's saying it can't read the API key. And that's because we have not actually imported some stuff at the top. So in order for us to actually read the API key, we need to write in some code. So all we need to do is say require parentheses quotes dot env and then outside we can say dot config parentheses hit save and now if i were to run this it would technically show the api key so i'm gonna, i'll probably have this blurred out but uh now you can see up it shows the api key there and it says hi which means it's logging this response here so now i can just go here i can change this to error now and then i can change this to uh whatever we want so i'll say response and right now we got to find what we want to actually post now. So let's do, it should be response.data. And then what happened to my, oh yeah, there we go, okay. So let me log response.data first. I wanna see what is actually showing up. Let me get rid of this API key here. So again, this is what the code looks like currently. And again, if you wanna have this import, we can also update that to import. But if you were doing import, you had to go in here and type in uh, like type and then change it to uh, module. But uh, yeah, we're not gonna do that for now. We don't need to, but in case you want to, and then we'll just do node index.js. 
and I want to see the data that it shows by. All right, so now it says here created model choices object here. Okay, so what I want to do is go response dot data dot and let's do choices, and I want to target the first message. So we're going to put dot zero, and then I'm going to say dot message, and then dot content. So let's try this, see what happens. I'll post node uh, index.js. And look at this, it says is a test. So what's cool here is we can say, uh, we can update this. And also this is the model, which I'll go through in a second, but uh, we can say like, what is two plus two? Save it. And it's gonna respond in a terminal with four, ideally if this is correct. There we go. Look at that. So real quick, I'll show you guys what this part does. Is the uh, the model? If you were to go here, they have different models. So this I think is the most recent one, the GPT 3.5 Turbo. I think that's the most advanced. And then they have like one exactly just for text. So text DaVinci 03. There's another one. I don't remember exactly how I wrote it. Let me see if I can find it. But basically, this these models here is GPT 3.5 Turbo again. You can go through the docs and look through the different models. And again, depending on what you need, you would obviously update this. And what's even cool here is this is again just showing you the basics on how to set it up. Because then obviously, if you want to sell this on like a website front end, you'd have to create your own front end parts and then import these values through there. So we could say like write a 100 word script for a I don't know, a scary story. And then this, I I, essentially, if you were to have like a chat uh, log, you could type this type of script in and you can change the content up too. But basically, I just do note in the JS. And what's gonna happen now is actually gonna hopefully write this script in a terminal, which ideally, if you understand how this is working, then that means you can go ahead and create your own front end parts or you know download some packages and then pass those values in to where this will display on your actual desktop, AKA your uh, website browser. So right now it's loading because it's gonna take a minute. But I said 100 because I did this before and it took like, it, it wrote like an insane amount of uh, lines. So let's see, getting error, open API, what happened here? Let me see, did I put any uh, undefined? Maybe something happened. So let's do this. Instead of putting uh, 100, let's just say write a script for a scary story. So again, since this is still basic, I didn't want to keep it too crazy. Message content, yeah, I'll keep it like this for now. Hopefully this uh, prompt works, but uh, right now let's try to look if I can see if there's any noticeable errors right here. And let's see, let me go up here, let's see, opening on Axios. So make sure I have, yeah, maybe, looks like it's, I don't think that'd be an issue. Maybe it might've been the prompt I put. But now let's just see what happens when I type this prompt in and then see what happens. So now it's still saying an error. Yeah, so it should, it should work. What if I, let me close that really quick, clear. No index.js again. It should be working. I'm not sure why it isn't working right now. All right, there we go. So yeah, I guess I just had a closed server. I'm not sure why it was giving me the error earlier. Cause like, I mean, I didn't see any issues with the code. But yeah, so look at this. Now we have this uh, scary scripts written it out and it's very similar to how Chatter Beats would have been if you were to make this on your actual uh, web page. So again, I'll do like one more example. I don't know, let's see. Um, tell me 10 foods that are healthy. Save it, again, write it out and we'll see if it actually does continue to work. Yeah, so I, I knew this, there wasn't anything wrong with the code. It was just weird, I guess it's not working, but so far, there we go. We have 10 lists right here and it actually has an explanation. So as you can see, this is a very basic setup, but what you can do now is create a front end section. You can probably move this code into like a different uh, file and then basically go through the docs and see like your specific type of project you wanna build and then utilize that from there. And you don't have to use Axios, you can use their built-in functions too or in fetch or whatever, but this is pretty much the very basics on how to use ChatGPT API. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.